Here is the man in charge, Mario Gizende of Brazil. He'll be the referee for this massive encounter. We had to have a Brazilian ref under these circumstances. And we're underway at the Estadio Monumental, the home site for River Plate. The River Plate, in fact, is the only thing that separates these two countries. We are in Eastern Argentina. The long ball right off the bat. This is Claudio Lopez looking for Batistuta on the left. He's challenged by Rodriguez. Gets it into the 18 and stopped. But before that, the ball had rolled out of play. Nice to see uh, the good sportsmanship early on. These two have a rich history. The last time they met was in the Copa America of 99. Argentina won that match. However, Uruguay advanced to the final of that tournament where Argentina was dispatched in the quarters. One of many amazing achievements Uruguay has done as a football power. Walter Samuel will get the benefit of a whistle and a free kick. Ayala. Over to the left, this is Sorin. Back to Samuel, to the midfield. There's Gili Gonzalez, he is brought down, free kick yet again. It is in fact Simeone, my apologies, will be the holding midfielder from behind. A nice tackle initially by Guigoy. And then Gallardo on the second effort does win the free kick. Marcelo Gallardo, for the first time in these World Cup qualifiers, will be the attacking midfielder. He has sat patiently behind Verón, Ortega, Aymar. Those three players unavailable, so Gallardo is thrust in there. Not a bad player to put under the circumstances. His ball crossed in and out of play. And what I mean by that is he was the MVP of the French League last year, and uh, he's your fourth option. Not bad at all. Claudio Lopez also getting back to health. One of the oldest histories in football, and look at the records. 42 wins for Argentina, 20 wins for Uruguay. And your Argentina have lost nine times in those matches. And uh, of those nine, two big ones. 1928, the final of the Olympic Games in Amsterdam. Uruguay defeated Argentina. 1930, the final of the World Cup in Uruguay. Uruguay defeats Argentina to become the first World Cup champion ever. Argentina in the blue, an interesting strip for Uruguay. I've never seen this. The red, in order to differentiate the two, and normally their strips are very similar. As you can see by the similarity in their flags, the ball put back by Cedres. Oliveira, back it goes to Claudio Hussein, another key player today in case Argentina hopes to win it. Into Magallanes, Magallanes. Set back, Oliveira. Nicolas Oliveira, the man who would be king. The boy wonder. And there's Hernan Burgos. Oliveira, one of the best players on youth levels in the last few years. Now he moves to the senior level. He's still going through that adjustment period, but many people have him pegged to be a superstar. There's Gallardo. He loses it, though, in the midfield to Pablo Garcia. Taken right back here by Simeone. Simeone cuts the two defenders on the left. Sorin. Nice ball in, but best defending so far by Dario Rodriguez. He'll give up the corner, but the alternative was a free shot on goal from number seven, Claudio Lopez. Edge of the 18, that time dispossessed was Hussein. Back to collect it. Dario Rodriguez in front of Claudio Lopez. Those two familiarizing themselves to each other. And it is out of play, throw in for Uruguay. Minute five. We're neither here nor there in this one just yet. Let's see, Dario Rodriguez asking for perhaps a 
hard here. I don't see much from the part of... Maybe that's not asking for a card. We're not sure what that is, but we move on. Burgos. The clearance handled in the back by Sorondo. Now Magallanes. On the books at Real Madrid, he is really coming to his own in these World Cup qualifiers. Scoring goals at will, and now making a break. He has Oliveira on his right. That was very ambitious. Even though Oliveira is very quick, no way he's going to track that one. Again, Burgos. So far, Uruguay thrusting their chest out. Reason I said earlier how appropriate a Brazilian referee for this match. I tell you, you know Brazilians certainly have a dislike for Argentines. Uruguayans aren't high on their list either. Just go back to 1950 in the World Cup final in the Maracanã, where Uruguay pulled off perhaps the biggest upset in football history by beating the mighty Brazilians to obtain their second World Cup. in Italy, Recoba with Inter of Milan, Samuel in his first season with Roma, teammate of Gabriel Batistuta. Recoba will take the corner. Not a bad effort. It dipped, but cleared away by Ayala. Here is Oliveira. Oliveira persists. Ball played in towards Magallanes. Cleared away that time by Vivas. Now chested down, Lembo, left foot shot, not in the area of danger from Rodriguez. Burgos will clear it away. tackle but we continue from Lembo and then pushed out of it Oliveira look at the separation he gets in the midfield oh a premature ball taken by Hussein Gini Gonzalez and out of play well we mentioned Argentina is without Ortega without Verone Crespo not in the starting 11 Pablo Aymar one of the best contributors in the past couple matches for Argentina also on the bench. However, Uruguay dealing without dealing to play without some of their key components, namely their star defender Paulo Montero, who still has missed so many matches. He played against Colombia. He hasn't played since. They also are missing Fabian O'Neill, as well as their sco goal scorer Silva. So they are shorthanded themselves. They do have Recoba, and there's optimism as a result oh great ball for Hussein stayed in play no it didn't in the end judged to have been out the man on your right is Marcelo Bielsa head coach of the Argentine national team the man on their left Daniel Passarella former captain of the Argentine national team Argentine through and through yet here he is coaching Uruguay It'd be interesting to see what's going in his head. I'm sure it's all business, but you have to think. A man that bled for Argentina and battled. Now, coaching one of their bitter rivals. Oh! That one over the head, Daniel Passarella. Has done a very nice job with Uruguay. He 
who's in charge when they reach the Copa America final, although his assistant, Victor Pua, was the man on the bench at the time. Uruguay right in the thick of things for World Cup qualifiers. In the last process for qualification, they mysteriously fell out of whack and were out of the running much earlier than most. Now they're right there. They want to make sure they don't lose touch to the top teams. That includes Argentina, who currently lead the 10-team group. High ball to the right side. The chase is on. Here's Rekova. Samuel fend him off. Burgos. Off the side of the foot. We should let you know he hasn't played a match for either his club, Mallorca. Started a match on the top level or for Argentina in ten and a half months. We'll see how he performs today. And of course, the job that Marcelo Bielsa has done cannot be overshadowed. A tremendous job. And if they can win here, Argentina really can pull away from the pack in this group. Oliveira. Garcia. Oliveira, the bump from Hussein, free quick Uruguay. Minute 12, no goals in what has been a very clean match, a flowing match. Rekova, the captain, will take this one. Magallanes making his presence known. Rekova goes to the right side, he's overshot this one. Oh, but it curves in nicely at the last moment for Cedres. Right back in, off the foot of Washington Thais. to Ayala. Ayala will survey the pitch. Now look for a target. That ball a bit short. Intercepted by Dice. Magallanes. Pass to Recoba. Out of play. Throw in Argentina. That's a great throw in. And it sprung Hussein loose. In it goes Batigol. Gallardo. Gallardo, Hussein onside, he'll have time. Hussein keeps it low, cleared away by Garcia. Now Oliveira. And that one is out of play. And I tell you what, the ball boys on the sideline getting those balls in extra quick for Argentina. Hussein. In essence, Claudio, in essence, Claudio Hussein is filling in for Brujita Verón, who would be playing on that right side of the midfield. Hussein, a different player altogether. Hussein, more of a defensive midfielder, whereas Ortega, as we've seen, not Ortega, I should say, but Verón, a player that can really trap those defenders. Oliveira! Oh, well done by Nelson Vivas, who at a moment there was about to get scorched. Ayala. That one played back. Sorin. Kili Gonzalez. Simeone. Gallardo. Well done, Oliveira, but it goes straight to Simeone. Simeone right back to Gallardo. Gallardo with the most to gain from today's match for Argentina. He has been lost in the shuffle with all these talented central midfielders that Argentina possess on their roster. That one back by Garcia. Now it's Lembo. Lembo over the head. Nobody for Argentina commits to that. Finally, Ayala gets over there. It'll be a throw in for Samuel. Gallardo. Samuel plays it up. Sorin stays in the attacking end. No challenge there and intercepted in the back by Guigoy. 
Ligoy will continue. Wisely off to Oliveira. Ooh, Oliveira having difficulty weighing those balls. Minute 15, scoreless. Vivas. Ayala. Nice ball in by Hussein. Vivas. Pati goal. Gallardo. Gallardo. Off the front of the foot. Not a bad effort. Gallardo usually very unselfish, decided to give it a go this time, and he didn't miss by much. Gallardo used to play at River Plate before moving to Monaco, so he's very familiar with his pitch, as are several players in the starting 11 for Argentina. Former River Plate players include Burgos, Vivas, Sorin, current River player Hussein, Gallardo, a former player. Vivas. That one intercepted by Rodriguez, who's done well in the early moments. Cedres, Rodriguez. Up it goes, missing out, Oliveira headed away by Vivas, it'll be a throw-in. Well, now a free kick has been given to Uruguay, or to Argentina, my apologies. Foul called on Magallanes, Hussein. That's a great ball to the midfield, to Gallardo, Bati goal awaits. Touched off wide by Sorin. And a foul against Gallardo, it appears. Fabian Carini. Burgos. The two keepers go back and forth. Taken there by Guigoy. Magallanes misses his jump. Here's a chance for Recova. Recova. And Samuel read it well. Number three defenders in the back for Argentina. Samuel is the most physically gifted. Ayala and Vivas, very scrappy, quick. Not very strong as, a, as compared to Samuel. That is why Marcelo Bielsa relies on Samuel so much. That's a great ball up to Recoma, and over comes Ayala. He's the leader, though, in the back. That ball played out to the right side. Hussein Simeone. And then Sorin. Sorin is playing all over the pitch. Normally a left-sided player with a three-man back. Sorin now gets to go in the midfield and has been roving around. Gallardo. He wanted the return pass. Instead, Claudio Lopez tries to get the win. Dario Rodriguez foils him again. Great defending by the number six. And this has to be a pleasant surprise for Passarella. We continue or do we? When Simeone came in hard, he was brought down equally hard. And a free kick from the right side. Gallardo is there. Now joined by Lopez. Quickly taken, Sorin. Now Batistuta. Soft little touch inside. It's coming up with Ayala now the break. This is Thais. He's looking for Magallanes. Minute 20, we continue to roll along here. Nil, nil. To the left side, short and taken by Sorondo. 
Cedres. Ruben Recobo was hacked from behind by Vivas. And he has a couple words for Vivas as they both retreat. And that catches the attention of Marco Hezende. As we progress, you know this match certainly has the potential to digress. These nations have done battle so many times. And both have disappointed the other. There's a big ball. Marayala gets to the end of it. And when you talk about this rivalry, the mysticism of Uruguay always is on top. There's a great tackle by Simeone. And a not-so-good tackle. Followed up by that by Gallardo. In Uruguay, the smallest nation size-wise landmass of the 10-member Comebol Confederation. Yet with one of the richest histories. And Gallardo off and running. He was brought down. Free kick coming up. And we might have our first booking. We do. It's for Nicolas Oliveira. In addition to Uruguay being a remarkable power and we'll try to find the reasons why. They're also sandwiched in between Argentina and Brazil, but they have found a way. Free kick chance, Batistuta and Gallardo shoulder to shoulder here. Let's see if Batigold gets a go. He does. In it goes Ekaneni. The young keeper going to his left denies Batigol. He can do it all, Batistuta. Exhibit A. That was on its way in. What a weapon. Good to see him back. He had missed several of these qualifiers due to a continuing problem with tendonitis in his knee. Lopez! Batistuta, Batistuta set it through and only made it back to clear. It was actually Washington Thais just in front of Marcelo Gallardo. And again, what a play by Batistuta. Unselfish as always when he has to be. Corner kick, Claudio Lopez, and now Argentina starting to raise the heat level. Back in by Samuel. Now the chase, Guigoy is there, and a free kick for Uruguay. Argentina intercepts right back to Recoba, though. Recoba works the right flank, he'll isolate himself. Lift it up, Magallanes is offside. A Brazilian crew of officials here today in this one. Passarella, a member of that 1978 World Cup champion team from Argentina. Rodriguez, Oliveira. Rodriguez again. Oh, that's a great delay. He's got Magallanes. Magallanes the touch. Magallanes the cross. Oh, what do we have? What do we have? Recoba had a sight on it. And was there a tug from Sorin? Apparently not. Rodriguez started it. The little touch by Magallanes. He knew where Recoba was, and I don't think there was much of a foul there. That ball by Magallanes took a deflection off of Samuel, I believe, and that slowed the ball down somewhat. And if it didn't touch him, there's no way that Recoba gets a chance to even come close to it. As that ball played out another corner, last touch by Ayala. You'll see Bielsa do this a lot. Take that lonely little seat in front of the bench Make the long walk out. 
time and time again. Recoba, that one starts to dip, and Burgos did well. And it may start an interesting counter here. Gili Gonzalez, a laser to Hussein. Hussein back to the left side. Gili Gonzalez will track it down. The pace of the wingers. And denied, or maybe not, free kick. And his coming over was Alejandro Lembo. Also there, Gonzalo Sorondo. There you see in the background, Pablo Aymar. Marcelo Delgado, amongst others. Gustavo Lopez on that bench for Argentina. And there was the nice defensive play to get in front. And let's see the coach's reaction. Cedres. Up and over taken by Burgos. Over to the right, Hussein. Hussein battling this time with Rodriguez. It will be a throw in for the Uruguayans. Minute 27, Uruguay would really love to get a point out of this result if they can keep it at this. We still have a long way to go, but certainly Daniel Pasada on the back of his mind contemplating what his team can realistically do here. Certainly they can get the victory, but a point would satisfy him, I believe. There's Cedres, former Boca Junior player again, putting it through. Burgos. Ayala. Right back to Burgos, and now he'll clear. You have to wonder that the Achilles heel for Argentina, it hasn't really surfaced yet. Maybe the goalkeeping. Roberto Bonanno has done very well. And then he's not available here. Burgos, a solid keeper, but getting up there in years, hasn't got that much match experience, is not the number one choice at the club level. There's a great ball in. Gallardo! Marcelo Gallardo earns his keep from 25 yards. He ran to his right. He pocketed to his left, and Argentina take the lead. What a moment for the man they call El Muñeco, the doll. This is a tremendous strike. Did not have that many legs on it. Went through the legs of the defender. Took Carini to his right when he was moving to his left initially. Delightful. And that's how you earn call-ups again and again. Uruguay look to answer now. Minute 29, we're about to go minute 30. There's the monumental stadium, an immense structure. And now if Uruguay want to get a point, they're going to really have to work at it. Magallanes, the left footer on this one, five-man wall. Magallanes actually hit a goal from here against Ecuador in Uruguay's last match. Almost an identical placement for the ball. Let's see if he can recreate it. Magallanes! Oh, my God, it went up the post! 
touched the keeper and I believe it went off the post. Magallanes, deadly from that spot. This ball in, just in front of Burgos was Gallardo with the clearance. Now on the left, the break. Here's a chance for Argentina. What? Lopez has no help. Now the help comes. It's Gallardo, the clear by Oliveira. Uruguay wiping the sweat from their brow again. Argentina starting now to roll. Gallardo in the midfield. Gallardo! Well wide. Here's Fabian Carini who wisely just saw that one right away from him. Another look at Magallanes' kick. Didn't hit the post, it was all Burgos. Did it get a piece of Hussein? It started to dip big time. It did hit the post. An exciting trio of players up front for Uruguay. Now that Magallanes has proven that he is legit. Brekova and Oliveira form up that trio. And once they get that familiarity, once they get a lot of caps under their belts, they have a world of potential. Here is one of them, Brekova. That one to the back. And it took all the players out of it for Uruguay, who had all moved up. Thais with a throw in. Dice again. Cedres. Simeone. And a goal kick. Last touch by Cedres. Very nervous uh, figure is Bielsa. Walk in all directions to calm his nerves. Passarella will occasionally light up a cigarette. And here was Lopez, then Sorin. Played back out by Garcia. Now Magallanes. Oliveira tried to track it down. Could not. Samuel. Rodriguez with time. We'll let it roll out. It'll be a throw it. Here is Pablo Garcia with that throwback hairdo. Reminds me of the players of the 70s. If he only had those short shorts and the socks all the way up, he'd be a ringer. The big clearance looking for Recoba. Right in front of him was Ayala. Now getting it wide, looking for Oliveira. The pace was deadly. It was actually Washington Thais, who is very similar in looks to Oliveira. And he is called for the foul. Free kick for Argentina. Burgos walking the tightrope, but getting away. Lembo. Thais. Ooh, that foot was up. No whistle. Now Oliveira plays it to the midfield. A little tug there by Sorin. And we do get the whistle this time. Magallanes. Recoba. Strong move by Recoba. The left foot. Magallanes is onside. Kept on by Batistuta. Rodriguez. Oliveira, nice passing by Uruguay. Finding the open man, Magallanes blocked that time by Hussein. Uruguay retains possession, but only for a moment longer. Controlling in the back, this is Guigoy. There's Magallanes, he charges through, but Hussein handles it well. This will favor Uruguay, Dario Rodriguez again doing that scrappy work. Recoba has a couple options, but look how well organized Argentina's in the back. Thais. 
First time we've seen him move into the offensive set. Garcia, Thais. And chipped up there by Kili Gonzalez, called by the linesman. Free kick for Uruguay. Minute 36. And it'll be a chance for Recova. Two talented left footers up front for Uruguay and Recova and Magallanes. Recova. No one there. Handled by Vivas. Will it be a corner? No, it'll be a throw it. Uruguay, a nation always overcoming adversity in the world soccer stage. They had a bit of a rut here in the last few years. Last World Cup they have been was Italy 90 where they were led by the dynamic combo of Ruben Sosa and Enzo Francescoli. A disappointing World Cup for them. Where they were dispatched by the host in the round of 16. That ball into Burgos. On a lower scale, they did win the 97. Copa America reached the 99 final. My apologies, won the 95 version and got to the final in 99. Getting the split with Brazil in those matches. So they've hung around and now ready to reassert themselves, get back in that World Cup, certainly capable when healthy, namely with Montero aboard. He can make an impact. Nicely done by Recoma. Samuel, though, patiently waited and took it away from him. Here is Thais. Now Pablo Garcia played into Cedres. Cedres fending off one Argentine defender. This is Guigoy. Cedres. The one-two with Arrecoa. Cedres, though, unable to track it down. And now here is Kili Gonzalez. In the back, handled by Sorondo. Gallardo. Starting to pull the strings with some regularity. And on the right, the cross swung in. Dangerous ball. Second effort, Gallardo. Save Carini. The head of Ayala and out of play. Olivera. And a foul against Gallardo on Garcia in a roll reversal. It's usually Garcia defending Gallardo that time. It was the flip flop. Vice versa, if you will. Lembo. Thais onside Magallanes in it goes and just wide of that first post by Thais Magallanes called for a couple offsides he has been very leery ever since of doing it again and has kept on in the last few possessions deflected off a of Sorondo off the foot of Gallardo nothing there Nicely done by Magallanes. He continues to impress in half number one. Minute 40 now. Cedres to Garcia. Garcia, I think it was from Magallanes, grabbed though prematurely. And now Gallardo, a long ball, but handled there by Sorondo. Saw it coming. Guigoy. Blocked by Sorin. Kili Gonzalez brings it down. Yeah. 
Ayala. Near side, Gallardo. Top five teams will move on in this World Cup procedure. The top four automatic bids to Korea and Japan. The fifth will have to play the winner of the Oceanic region, which will be no easy task. Likely to be a very hungry Australian team. That ball put through Magallanes. Excellent defensive work by Ayala. So the five top teams have broken away from the main group. Now the trick is for teams like Uruguay, as this ball fired in well wide off the foot of Rodriguez, the trick is not to finish fifth. So Uruguay knows how important these matches are. This is the ninth of 18 as we reach the halfway point. Argentina plays Uruguay. Colombia played Paraguay in another battle of teams in the top five. And Brazil played Venezuela. Brazil being the other member of that top five breakaway group. Brazil won convincingly. So they're the big, benefit, the big beneficiaries of this round's play. Colombia losing at home to Paraguay. And now Paraguay move up. So if Argentina can hang on here, Argentina, Brazil, and Paraguay will make a little mini break of their own. And Uruguay and Colombia may find themselves battling for that fourth all-important spot. We still have a long way to go, so we won't jump the gun just yet. A lot can change. All you look forward to is to see either Venezuela on your schedule coming up, or maybe a home match against Bolivia. Right in front, Bati Gol! Bati Gol! Bati Gol! Gabriel Batistuta collects Argentina's second, and with only minutes to go before halftime, that could be the demoralizing blow. No amusement from the Uruguayan sideline. And that's why he's in there. Started by Hussein, who chipped it in. Look at the work from Gallardo. Again in the middle of things. He gets it wide. It was, in fact, Claudio Lopez. My apologies. Mr. Piojo. And he got that little touch. No, it was a decoy, though. Batistuta. That net's been shattered. It's all in tatters. I'm not sure what that is. Nor will I touch it or make any comments of it. Minute 44. A powerful blast by none other than Argentina's number one export, Gabriel Batistuta. Cedres. Argentina now can put it in cruise control. Let's tighten up the screws defensively. Rekova, and you can see them doing it right now. Rekova trying to do it himself. Little chip, not a bad effort. And Burgos got it. Cedres, I don't even think saw Burgos, so certainly no harm there. For Burgos, he gets the red badge of courage. Little cut on his eye. And Burgos and Magallanes talking to each other about whose hair is worse. Final minute before we hit stoppage time. Argentina without three big guns. Ortega, Verón, Aymar have a 2-0 lead. But can it be three? Ooh, and a nasty collision between Gallardo and Carini. And goalkeepers are getting into the fray now physically. Simeone. Hussein. Lopez gets a corner. Absolutely essential that Uruguay do not let anyone slip in a third goal here for Argentina. That will wrap things up here in a hurry.
Gallardo the take. First post, look for Sorin. Vivas to Gallardo. Gallardo finding out what, Lo what Lopez found out. No whistle. Well, there is as Dario Rodriguez obstructed the run of Gallardo. Watch this play off the right foot. Oh, delightful. He is having a great half. We're in our first minute of stoppage time. Two-man wall, Argentina looking to seal the deal here, potentially. Oh, it goes in, what a save by Carini! What a save by Carini off the foot of Juan B. The P is from Pablo Sorin. One last go for Argentina. And there will be no corner kick. Argentina goals by Gallardo and Batistuta lead it 2 to nil over their foe, Uruguay. We will be back with halftime right after this. Time now for Puma Trivia. Who was the first country to win the Olympics and the World Cup in a two-year span? The World Championship Soccer League wants to ask you to not take your soccer too seriously. It's Soccer Slam, full contact soccer. The skills of soccer, the hard-hitting action of hockey, and the high scoring of basketball. Soccer Slam, more skills, more action, more scoring. We even have more balls. Seriously. Catch the LA Surf against the Toronto Loons, Tuesday, October 17th. This installment of Rugby 101 is brought to you by RugbyRugby.com, the official internet partner of Championship Rugby and the U.S. Eagles. Rugby 101, art. Ah, sure, rugby players are violent and crazy, but underneath that, it's the heart of an artist. They love to sing. No, they never. They love dance. <laughs> they really love poetry. poetry. Our sensitivity makes me weep. Rugby 101. Our balls are bigger than yours. You should see him do collage. <laughs> Italy. World renowned for artistic treasures, culinary masterpieces, and soccer. We give you the great masters and the true taste of Italian artistry. Batistuta, Shevchenko, Salas, a little Del Piero, and some Totti. That's mean cuisine. Sure to have you screaming, bravissimo. Calcio Italiano Serie A on Fox Sports World. Get your game. Now the answer to the Puma trivia question. It wasn't Brazil, it wasn't Argentina, it was Uruguay who won the Olympics in Amsterdam in 28 and the World Cup in 1930. Sponsored by PlanetF1.com on Fox Sports World. Get your game. a while but Argentina finally got on track in this first half first Gabriel Batistuta with the free kick the save by Fabian Carini but the riding was on the wall there you see it Carini well, by the way it looks like he's 14 years old 
Made the save. Then Gallardo a minute 28. The glorious strike. And what a moment for this guy. 1-0 Argentina. Completely fooled Carini. Uruguay looked to strike back. It was Federico Magallanes. That one off the keeper, off the post. It remained 1-0. Full extension, almost snuck in there in the end. Then, the picked up ball, right in front, saved by Carini as Gallardo's shot deflected by one of the Uruguayan defenders. Then Hussein in minute 42, this was the killer. Wham! Batigol! Makes it 2-0 for Argentina, and the timing couldn't have been better for the home side. And a Uruguayan team that doesn't deserve to be down two goals is just that. And the shots you see, it's Argentina 7-6. to six, Corners favoring Uruguay. And when you have Recoba, corners can bear some fruit. The score, though, 2-0 Argentina. When we return, it'll be the second half kickoff. Bad down matches. We have another 45 minutes coming up. Watch closely. This amazing titanium tip drill bit is actually moving sideways to do what no other drill bit could ever do. It's yours when you put the power of titanium in your hands with Titan Master XL. The amazing new titanium tip drill bits that are so strong they'll never wear out. Guaranteed. Titan Master XL drill bits fit any drill, and their titanium tips give them the indestructible power to cut through virtually any surface. When you order your Titan Master XL drill set, you'll get 17 titanium tip drill bits of all sizes. Use them on wood, masonry, drywall, metal, you name the job, and Titan Master XL has it covered. You'll also receive the amazing Titan Master XL drill saw that turns any drill into a multifunction saw. The drill saw can be moved from side to side to turn small holes into big ones, smooth out squares and rectangles, cut straight line openings, and even sever materials in half. And you can turn your drill into a screwdriver with this Titan Master XL converter, which includes six flat and Phillips head screwdriver bits. Plus, you'll never have trouble finding the right size drill bit because the Titan Master XL drill set comes complete with this handy carrying case. And now, the Titan Master XL drill set can be yours for only $19.95. Call in the next 10 minutes, and we'll also include this complete set of 300 screws and fasteners of all sizes. The Titan Master XL drill set is so indestructible, it's backed by a lifetime warranty. If any of the drill bits ever break, we'll replace them absolutely free. You get 17 titanium tip drill bits, the titanium drill saw, screwdriver converter, six screwdriver bits, 300 screws and fasteners, and heavy-duty carrying case. That's 325 pieces in all for only $19.95. Order now. To order your set of Titan Master XL drill bits, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-941-8500. Or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $6.95 shipping and handling to Titan Master, 6960 Eastgate Boulevard, Lebanon, Tennessee. Or call 1-800-941-8500. From all corners of the globe, Football Mundial covers the game that unites the world. The best and only international soccer magazine show that features legends of the game, historical moments, and future superstars. In-depth profiles on the players that make the game what it is. A first for the world's greatest sport. Football Mundial, Saturday on Fox Sports World. Fox Sports World Class Moment. Stanic. Stanic. In the top five, Brazil have won, Paraguay have won, and now Argentina, 45 minutes away from adding their name to that list, which doesn't bode well for Uruguay or Colombia. Uruguay still have 45 minutes to do some repairs here. Rodriguez, glad to have you with us. I am Max Bredos for one of the biggest fixtures in international football. 
Argentina, Uruguay, two of only seven nations to have ever been crowned world champion. And here they are going toe to toe. I tell you, the next time these two teams meet, especially for the case of Uruguay, it will be the all important one. It'll be the last match of the qualifiers. And you figure Uruguay will definitely be in search of points. Argentina by then may have qualified already at the pace they're going. They win here, they go to 22 points with only a loss and a tie out of nine matches. Uruguay is in the red. If you're joining us late. Argentina in their traditional blue and white. Cedres. At halftime, there were no substitutions. We remain with the same 22 that we started with. To the midfield, back to collect it is Batistuta. Plays it on the left to Kili Gonzalez, who tried to play it to himself. Coming over late. Advantage played, and there's the whistle. It'll favor Uruguay, in fact. The foul is on Kili Gonzalez. Washington Thais has done well. The two players on the wings of the defense, Thais and Rodriguez, have both performed admirably. Magallanas one on three, not going to win that battle. And in addition, he will be whistled for the foul. Samuel. Looking for Gallardo. Garcia takes it away from him. And there is perhaps the figure of the match so far. And there is the 14-year-old looks of Fabian Carini. Reminds me a bit of French keeper Fabian Barthez, at least the way he plays and brings himself around the goal mouth. Very athletic. Not one of the taller keepers, but compensates that with that athleticism. That one out of play. Off Magallanes. And here's that play that ended the first half when Cedres collided with Burgos. Can't really blame Cedres too much. It did look accidental. Cedres coming over to apologize and as The Who once said in their song, all is forgiven. I'll sing that whole song for you later if this gets out of hand. Minute 49. Rodriguez. Garcia. Grazing Recova. Magallanes couldn't track it down. Touched by Vivas to Burgos. Stays in play and last touch by Uruguay. Well, last touch by Argentina. And that gets Marcelo Bielsa off of his stool. Obviously a sense of urgency for Uruguay, but they have to be patient with their opportunities. And will they get a corner kick here? They will. Vivas lobbying for the goal kick will not get it. So corner number five for Uruguay coming up. He'll go short with it. Here's a chance. Rodriguez! Magallanes! Magallanes has brought one back for Uruguay! And we ain't done! And now things heating up! Nobody cleared it for Argentina! just fired in by Rodriguez and Magallanes 
just tapped it in for one of the easiest goals he'll ever score. It deflected off Ayala. Now the question is, did that ball touch Vivas last to set up the corner kick that set up the goal? And that is what Marcelo Bielsa was talking to the referee about on the sideline. 2-1, take that. The timing of that goal could not have been better. Played wide by Gallardo. Right back in, nobody there as Thais clears. And that one put in the air. Now Sorin. Also in the air was Kili Gonzalez. Magallanes, you've got to take your hat off to this guy. He continues to score goals when Uruguay needs them. There is the play. Who did it touch last? So hard to determine there. Difficult call. Did look like it got a piece of Rodriguez. Free kick now for Gallardo as he looks to re-establish Argentina's previous lead. Everyone charges. Great ball by Gallardo, but great save by Carini. Maybe not so much great save, but great vision. Burgos. Very bad man marking by Argentina on that Uruguay goal. As there was three Uruguayan players with only one defender in that six-yard box. Gilly Gonzalez, nice ball, Gallardo, Gallardo, spins, Gonzalez trying to get off his left foot, played it across, wrong decision, it was short, Cedres, Nicolas Oliveira, Nicolas Oliveira continuing the rich tradition of black players in Uruguay, the first nation ever to break the color barrier in world football. This ball up to Cedres. The turn by Magallanes. Here it is again. Oh, that is as close to a toss-up as you could ever imagine. And I will go with the referee's call on that one. Gabriel Batistuta just kicked off his club play in Italy this past weekend. His team Roma victorious in their first match. Remember... A lifelong member of Fiorentina, that is all changed. And now he has started his affiliation with the Rome side. Sorin commits the foul. Here is Oliveira. So hard not to admire the football prowess and history of this Uruguayan side. Great tackle on Kili Gonzalez by Guigoy. Of all they have done, of all we have mentioned here, it is really remarkable. And you just have to pull for him, especially when you pick up a map and you look at the size of the country. Gonzalez, Guigoy, oh, this time Gonzalez gets his revenge. Oh, Batistuta! Great placement from Carini. And Carini trying to get that ball away from Batistuta. Leary is dealing with the legend. Just try to move him away without making too much eye contact. Or making too much of a fuss of it. On the left side, Rodriguez. Recova. 
take some off of that and a bit of a mix up between Cedres and Magallanes Cedres taking the shot Knocked out by Burgos. Kept in by Uruguay. They're winning the battle of possession and field. That one took a hop right there. Here comes Guigoy. Samuel will get it airborne. Got a lot of air underneath it. Headed in there by Lembo. Free kick Argentina. Foul against Lembo. You wonder if Paulo Montero was available if both Lembo and Sorondo, today's center backs, would be replaced just by Montero, allowing Passarella to bring in a fourth attacking player up front. Nice ball to the midfield, Guigoy. Tugged it in, Guigoy persists. Cedres. Samuel got low to get that one. Lopez, Simeone. Clipped up by Magallanes. Magallanes will pick up only the second yellow of the match. Both have been for Uruguay. And both have been for Uruguay's forwards. As Magallanes and Oliveira both pick one up. And well deserved. Gallardo, Hussein, Vivas. That one trying to split the defenders and find Batistuta. Sorin! Setting the table up for Kili Gonzalez. But in the end, handled by Washington Thais. Oliveira makes a break. Magallanes. Gets it well wide to Recoba, Recoba urging teammates to join him. Guigoy. Much more active role so far in half number two for number seven. Lembo. And this isn't his game, but he'll get bailed out. Or will he? Yes, he will. Look very awkward trying to handle that ball. Now, left foot shot, Magallanes. It was actually Pablo Garcia. A rare shot on goal from him. As Marcelo Bielsa starts the walk back to the stool. Yet again, Burgos. We talked about the goalkeeping situation in Argentina. Remember Roa, the World Cup hero in 98? He's uh, decided to follow his faith and dragged himself from the world soccer scene in anticipation for the end of the world, according to him. Which many people thought would happen at January 1, year 2000. And there's another school of thought who thinks it's going to happen January 1st, 2001. I hope they're both wrong. Or all these World Cup qualifiers will be for naught. Played in. I would say the strange world of Carlos Roa, but if he's right, then we'll all be eating some mutton pie. Magallanes, there is the very raucous Argentine crowd. Not very far from the Uruguayan capital either, so some Uruguayan fans scattered in there as well. We have reached the hour mark of this one. Rodriguez. Cedres. Nice slide tackle from behind, performed by Hussein. Very well dressed crew for Pasarela, not just him but his assistants.
Aí ela. That comes on the right, Hussein. Lopez. And that one too long for Sorin. Carini to clear it here. Well, Passarella was worried about the midfield. And he put Pablo Garcia and Guigoe in there to handle the attacking players like Gallardo. And Claudio Lopez, who is filling in for Ariel Ortega today. So far, it's done a pretty adequate job. Cross it goes to Thais. Long ball, way too long for Magallanes. Spinning out of a tough spot was Hussein. Free kick for Argentina. As we continue to move along in this one, Uruguay has already drawn a goal back in this half. It was very early. But they still need that second one. If Argentina win there, they pretty much may have done enough to already guarantee a spot of the months the top four. And it is premature to say that, but you can't really see Argentina falling on their face from here in with seven victories already out of nine. The next nine matches, they will not need seven wins to guarantee a spot. Maybe in the neighborhood of five or maybe four wins. Depending on what happens elsewhere. That ball in by Gallardo. Filters back to the 18. To the outside now as Gilly Gonzalez plays it to Batistuta. Sharp ball in, gets a second chance. This one way behind his intended target and out of play. And there is the apology. He doesn't have to do it much. Coming up was Ayala, he did well. Magallanes tried to pounce on it the last second. I tell you what, it's still very hard to get used to Uruguay playing in these red jerseys. Just doesn't seem right. Garcia tripped up in the midfield. And will this be the first yellow for Argentina? Oh my goodness, it's going to Diego Simeone, could you believe it? One of the most booked players worldwide. He is the hard man of Argentina. Gets a yellow. He's played well here today. He has played well in these World Cup qualifiers. There was a period there where he was moving from Inter to Lazio. As we get our first substitution, out comes Gabriel Cedres. Oh, and we'll have none of that. In comes Mario Regueiro. Here in minute 64. That ball in. That ball up to Magallanes. Getting back to Simeone, it looked for a while there that his best days were behind him. He was struggling at Inter, moved on to Lazio, still struggled in the Serie A, got it together, and it's paid off also here on the international level as he has gotten his gauges. It was a brief period only where he looked like it was over, but he has bounced back nicely. We go it. And he gets the throw in. He does, but not on the exact blade of grass that the Ball went out of play, and so we'll do it again. It should be a free kick. This is Thais. Minute 66. Sorin. 
Back in by Thais, back out by Spring. This is Lembo. Ayala now. Can they spring Batistuta loose? A series of headers. Thais, Guigoy. Oliveira. That one comes up to Regueiro, who fills into that forward spot, and Oliveira's moved back to the midfield. There he is. Things getting shuffled up a bit. Spacerada looks to get goal number two. Recova. Recova gets that ball in. No one there at the second post. The chase is on. It'll be Guigoy first there. Guigoy is continuing to have a solid second half. He's been all over the place. Looks for Magallanes, the goal scorer for Uruguay. Plays it to his left. The left foot shot up and over from Rodriguez. And not the right way to leave the pitch in any way by Cedres, but so is life with this rivalry. No love lost. No love ever from the beginning. Free kick to be taken by Oliveira. And that ball again intercepted by Oliveira as the build-up started for Argentina. It was Batistuta who gave it away. This is Lembo over to Regueiro. And nothing more. And there you see Sebastian El Loco Abreu who plays here in Argentina for San Lorenzo. He's about to come in himself. Another forward, so Pasarela now showing all his cards. Here is Regueiro. He's providing a spark. Look at the pace! Regueiro with the cross! Gallardo, he'll work the left side, Lopez wants it, it goes to Batistuta instead. The overlap on the right side and Hussein is there. He'll lift it up, Batistuta. Lembo, Simeone. Now Dario Rodriguez. Now they look to use Regueiro frequently. Ayala, terrible error there, and can Uruguay take advantage of it? Well, before we can do that, we will have the substitution, so it wasn't such a bad error after all. And it will be Sebastian Abreu, and he'll be coming in for, it looks like, yep, number 10, Recoba. Now this may move Magallanes to the midfield and bring Abreu up to Regueiro, so massive adjustments going on up front. Regoba can't believe it. <laughs> he really can't. He sees we're trailing by one. I think you need me in there. It's not Abreu's decision. This brings Passarella off the sideline. And Regoba wants another 20 minutes. He looks quite fit. And now Mario Marco Hezende. Look at Abreu's making sure it's number 10. It is. Recoba's got to get off the pitch. Look at Passarella. Can't stand it anymore. Come on, he says. And Recoba, who came over, his day is done. And he'll hand it over to Thais. Thais probably won't be the captain. He may go to Lembo. Passarella will probably have a discussion with his captain or his former captain now. This befuddles me a little bit as well. I gotta be honest with you. With all these targets up front, 
Rekova is the kind of guy that could connect it. Instead, he is pulled out. An embarrassing scene there for both coach and player. And it took about five minutes to make the switch. Free kick taken by Regueiro and Burgos in that sea of red and blue, able to collect it. Maybe Recoba had done something in the last few possessions that Pasarela just didn't like. Tripped up that time it was Gallardo. And do we have another yellow? No, Marco Hezende wants Pasarela back on his seat. Wants everything cleared up on the sideline. Sorin there, trying to move forward, and Oliveira clipped him up. Gallardo. Argentina's only slip-ups in nine matches. They lost to Brazil in Brazil. A tie here at Monumental Stadium with Paraguay, which probably was their worst performance of the tournament. Yellow card, it may be for Thais. If it is, it'll be the third for Uruguay. Sorin, for the second time within a minute, sprawled out on the pitch. And Gustavo Lopez is ready to come in for Claudio Lopez. Gustavo Lopez will bring yet another talented left foot player into the match for Marcelo Bielsa. He, Kili Gonzalez, and Juan P. Sorin will share that left flank. Lopez has been getting a lot of play for Marcelo Bielsa in these World Cup qualifiers. That is substitution number one for Argentina. Gallardo to take it here. Time ticking away. A goal here certainly will go a long way. Determining three points for Argentina. Here's Gallardo's offering. Cleared up and over by Gonzalo Sorondo. It'll be another corner. That ball put through to Batistuta and a foul on number nine. Goal kick coming up for Fabian Carini. Some nervous moments for these fans right now. Headed back and nicely to Burgos. As we're into minute 75. Oh, and a nasty spill. Gallardo is down. He took a knee to the face. And the protests begin. Also down on the play, I believe, is Sorondo. No, it's Lembo. It was a gruesome collision, and now it's getting worse as everybody's picking a dance partner and starting to shove. Well, well, well. I don't know if there was much intent on the part of Lembo. But he went up for that ball and just took out. Oh, goodness. The knockout blow almost jumped right over him. Thankfully, it was a glancing shot that took the side of the face. 
And those cleats did not meet Gallardo's face head on. And Gallardo will get the full allotment of time here to recover. Lembo is on his way up. Lembo fell from a high, high spot. And that is probably the reason for his injury. Finally, they are starting to disperse from the scene of the crime. The scene of the incident certainly shouldn't assume that Lembo did that with any intent. I certainly hope not. And look at Magallanes picking out Simeone. I know you're involved in some way, shape, or form. Bielsa back to the stool he goes, just making sure everything was all right. Gallardo's had a great match. Looking to avoid ending it in such a horrible fashion. And it may be a time for a switch. This Gallardo cannot continue. Look, the training crew's trying to pull him off. He has that dazed look in his face, and there will be a substitution. Or maybe a stretcher. Yeah, that may be it for Gallardo, which is really unfortunate. And who will be pulled off the bench here? Marcelo Delgado. Current player for Boca Juniors. He'll get a cap here. This really provide, you know, sets Argentina up without that playmaker in the midfield. Delgado more of a forward. From that center part of the pitch, he's going to be left with a bit of a void as Gustavo Lopez, the other attacking midfielder, is more of a left-sided player. And that's it for Gallardo. In comes Marcelo Delgado. He wants to play, but the training crew knows full well once they looked at his eyes that it was curtains. And he gets a great round of applause from this crowd for a great match. It saw him score Argentina's first. to my question is maybe Batistuta becomes the central midfielder. That one headed down by Lembo. Batistuta playing now in that central midfield role. Delgado very quick. Lopez Taking it there is Garcia, Oliveira. Oh, Uruguay gets bailed out. They just couldn't get it out of that area. Finally, the foul on Hussein. As we are now into minute 80. Sebastian Abreu, who dons those white shoes. He's a big target there. Great forward, also a good defensive player player from the corner kicks and set pieces on the other end because of his height. Garcia. Oliveira. Brought down free kick. This may be Federico Magallanes territory. 
<laughs> Look at the reaction from Marco Gesende, the referee. I gave you a free kick. I will not argue anymore. He's not getting a yellow. Didn't look like a yellow card offense from this angle. And now Uruguay with another chance. Magallanes has been close. Oliveira will be the right footer. You figure number nine gets first choice here. I'm going to stop just as Magallanes was in his, in his run. The Argentine wall not 10 yards back. Now we'll do it. Magallanes too high. It's about his worst offering we have seen today. A very young Uruguayan squad out there right now. It was young to start off with, but it's gotten considerably younger. With both Recoba and Cedres pulled out. Here's a chance on the left. A charge by Gustavo Lopez. And he'll get a corner kick. Lopez who plays in the Spanish Primera. As does this man, Kili Gonzalez. And that one played up and in, and Oliveira with the defensive work right back in, and Carini, Carini, did he keep it away? Corner kick. And Ayala took a knock there as he was about the player who fired it back into the 18. And one of the Uruguayan defenders got right underneath his arm, right in the armpit area. Here's the clear by Oliveira initially, and Abreu, ooh, lifted that leg right in there. Caught part of the fingers. Abreu clears. Argentina doing very well with those key players missing. Also remember Fernando Redondo and his continuing quarrels with the National Federation, not part of this side. player that any coach would love to have offside on Sorin quickly Uruguay dispatch Oliveira short for Regueiro now the charge that ball played in you can hear Marcelo Bielsa screaming at Turco that is for Hussein he wants him up Ayala back, nothing deliberate now from Argentina. They will, as they say here, take their sweet Tulsa time. Nice work to by Guigoy to find Oliveira. In the end, Samuel disrupts. Ooh, and Abreu really hustled to see if he could create something out of nothing there. Uruguay just seeking that one last quality chance. And there you see Sorondo sandwiched by Sam, Batistuta, and Ayala. The return of Daniel Passarella. And a free kick awarded to Argentina here. As we now enter minute 85. Argentina wants another yellow already for Uruguay. Oliveira, Magallanes, Thais, and Lembo have yellow cards. Only Simeone has a yellow for Argentina. Up on the left and out of play. Substitution-wise, Argentina have made two. Uruguay have made two. Limbo. Magallanes tracks it down. We going. Ayala. Oh, a nice delay and dummy to lose Abreu. Vivas. Out comes Marcelo. 
Marcelo Delgado. Got those wheels churning, Delgado. Gets it wide, and Gilly Gonzalez couldn't track it down. right side it goes Uruguay finally able to work it loose only to give it right back lifted up and high by Hussein taken by Karini the big clearance may pay off here is Alonso that cross for Abreu is short and a bit deep Rodriguez great work on the deck by Delgado We'll just concede the throw in here. With only a couple minutes to go, we may have a fair bit of stoppage time as a result of the injury to Gallardo, as well as that substitution disaster featuring Alvaro de Coba, where it took him about two and a half minutes to get off the pitch. Really not the practice you need to make when you're trailing a match. If you're winning, it's a different story. Throw and coming here. Uruguay just looking for that one little cheek in Argentine's armor. Played up this time. Regueiro cleared away by Ayala. Uruguay, the buildup nicely done by Garcia. Now they get numbers up. Garcia's ball intercepted by Kili Gonzalez. To Sori. And now a chance. Maybe a counter. Lembo with a timely interception. Only Beta loses it, though. And Argentina may be home free now. Offside on Batigol. Not by much. Final minute of regulation. Abreu up in the air. That's his game. Sorin. Comes to Batistuta. Now it's Ayala. Guigoy. Sorondo. Abreu trying to fetch that one. Unable to do so as Samuel had the position. Should get notification of how much stoppage time we will have shortly. Samuel gives it a good blast. Oliveira Garcia. 
Garcia again, momentarily lost by Regueiro. Uruguay have shown nothing in the last 10 minutes. Nothing official, but we're getting word that it's going to be upwards of five minutes of stoppage time. Here's the right foot shot. A desperate effort from Alonso. Uruguay have shown nothing here in the last 15 minutes or so. That would make you think that maybe there's a surprise equalizer in store. That one gets all the way back. Flag is up against Delgado. Can I tell you, this Brazilian crew, cool as cucumbers. The way they've handled themselves, they've done very well in a match of these high stakes between these old, old rivals. Cleared away from danger. Still plenty of time for Uruguay as we've elapsed one minute 45 seconds of stoppage time Sorin really risking injury there and going that high In the corner, what do we have? Batistuta may have won a free kick. Back it goes, Simeone. Great ball from him, Hussein. Batistuta wisely pulls it back. Smart play from the captain. Touched in by Kili Gonzalez. Now, Gustavo Lopez. Sorin, and taken by Carini. Only one player there was Abreu. He did have Regueiro, but in the end, handled by Vivas. And on the corner of battle, Thais and Lopez. It'll be a throw in for Uruguay. Now they need a build up. They need to work the way they did earlier in the match. The short passes get one good quality chance because the chances they've had here now three minutes plus in the injury time have been very ordinary. The high move to the right side. The cross comes in. Garini. So hope springs eternal. We're working on the fourth minute now. In stoppage time. And a foul against Alonso. So Uruguay able to muster absolutely nothing here. And this will be a crushing defeat for them. And the uh, colors and songs of the Argentine crowd continue. Always a wonderful atmosphere. Very few nations can match it, maybe, in England. With the great atmospheres they have. There, the ball just wide of that first post from Batistuta. Almost took out one of the photographers. Four and a half minutes. There can't be much time left now. Garini looks for Alonso. Abreu and Reguero move up. Alonso again whistled for the foul. Here is that last chance. It was the one-two, in essence, as Delgado sent it right back to Batistuta. Just went wide in the end. Five minutes complete. The big collect here by Simeone. And Pablo Garcia, the new captain. 
wouldn't say showing much sportsmanship trying to lift up Simeone. You're not going to get him up any quicker. Taken away, Uruguay. This has got to be it. Garcia maintains well. Puts it into space. Up comes Rodriguez. Oh, a mishap there between he and Oliveira. Neither one backed off. And it's out of play. I have to imagine that'll be it. We're in the sixth minute now. And Argentina looks like they will stake their claim on top of the Comebol standings as they never let Uruguay out of their own half in the end. Marcelo Bielsa cannot believe there's more time. That ball on the right side. Argentina, one last go. That is it. Argentina win it, a crushing defeat for Uruguay. We'll be right back for more after this. Religion, Carnival, and Soccer. World renowned for producing some of the finest talent that soccer has to offer. Forget about it! The energy, the passion, Brazilian soccer. Football Brasileiro on Fox Sports World. Get your game.